This year for Veterans Day, we went to the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago for a special event. Uh, the event was held after hours in the U-505 submarine exhibit. This was the first time that they had done something like this, and so we wanted to take advantage of it because we're history buffs, and the museum happens to be one of my favorites. Uh, it's a great museum for kids and adults of all ages, and we go there on a fairly regular basis whenever we can get to Chicago. When you're in Chicago, a lot of people talk about going to the different museums and things that are available there, but the Museum of Science and Industry is sometimes ignored by people because it's sort of off by itself, away from the other museums. But Jessie mentioned it's one of her favorites, it's one of my favorites. Um, there's just a lot of things to see and do there. And one of the, the best exhibits I think they have is the U-505 submarine. So for those who don't know, the U-505 was a Nazi submarine that was captured by the US Navy during World War II. And it was a huge capture for us because we were able not only to get the technology of the submarine and learn about that, that they were using uh, for submarine warfare, but also the Enigma coding machines that the Germans were using. Uh, we finally had our hands on some of those and were able to start decoding some of the messages that the Nazis were using as part of their wartime plans. Yeah, and they have a really cool full exhibit that goes along with it. So. Back in 2004, I believe it was, uh, they finally moved the submarine inside. It had sat outside at the Chicago Museum for years and years and years, uh, but they didn't really have a full exhibit to go with it. So back in the early 2000s, they dug a big pit next to the museum between the museum and Lake Michigan. They, you know, special equipment lowered the sub down into the pit and then built up around it. One of the cool things about being able to move the sub inside and have a fully enclosed exhibit was the ability to not only showcase the specific U-505, but just the U-boats in general and how the Allied forces dealt with a major threat during World War II. U-505 submarine floor. One of the things that makes the U-505 exhibit impressive is the way you walk into it. You you kind of you come down the uh, the uh, elevator and you enter this part of the building where they have put the sub inside and when you turn the corner just there it is in all of its glory, I guess you would say, and you get a feel for how big this ship is that they have put inside a building. Uh, it is just something really impressive to see and to be able to walk next to and, and get a feel for how big it seems. What I find impressive is even though it seems big on the outside, and truthfully it is big on the inside, most of it was set up for the equipment, the supplies, all the controls, the torpedoes. And so trying to house 53 men in this submarine was actually a pretty big feat in of itself. Half the crew was on and half the crew was off at any given time, meaning that they had to hot bunk so that one crew could sleep while the other worked. And then, talk about having to feed 53 people. Now these are on a sub, that means they're out in the water, under the water, for about three months at a time. So they had to have all the supplies, about 12 tons worth, to be able to carry with them. And that's a lot of food. They shoved it in every nook and cranny that they could in that submarine. And of course, because they were going to be gone for so long, they always had to eat the fresh stuff first. I have to say, I was most impressed by the kitchen. It's a one-man kitchen with a super tiny stove, oven, a little sink, and how they prepared meals for 53 people every day for three months, I have no idea, and that's super impressive. Really, anywhere you go in this ship, you realize how tight the quarters were. Uh, you know, you, you go from the front torpedo room with the bunks and then you go into this little tiny kitchen, but then you've got the control room where all of the activity happens to operate the ship. And, you know, when we were there and, and people were touring the sub with us, we had, what, maybe half a dozen of us mm -hmm. at a time in an area like in this control room, and we were bumping into each other and having to get out of each other's way. And so trying to think about doing that when you're actually operating the equipment and making the ship run uh, is just incredible to think about what they went through to do that. And, you know, as you mentioned, three months out at a time and no washroom facilities. And so that was some pretty tight quarters in a very 
uh, hot submarine. You mentioned the um, the hot bunking. Uh, I think that was in some ways literal because they said the coolest spot on the ship would have been the front torpedo room where they slept and it was 90 some degrees i think yeah it was hot 90 to 100 degrees then as you got back further into the ship by the engines and things you were reaching probably 110 120 degrees at times because they also did a lot of their tours down near the equator so the air outside was hot all the equipment inside all those people in that small space it was really not a very comfortable place to be i'm sure when you go from the control room into where the diesel engines are too, you realize the close quarters and you can only imagine, or maybe it's hard to imagine how loud it must have been when those diesel engines were running. And the one tour guide said that many of the uh, German uh, sailors ended up with hearing problems or almost deaf. You know, Jesse, you mentioned that they always had one shift on and one shift off. So one shift was working and the other was sleeping I'm not sure how well the sleeping was going on because of how close they are in these quarters. One of the neatest things about the event was specifically hearing from the curator. And unfortunately, we were not able to record his presentation, but we did learn a lot of interesting things from him and about not only just the conservation of the ship itself, but the history of the U-boats in general. The U-505 entered the war in August of 1941. It was captured in June of 1944, and in those three years, it sunk eight Allied merchant ships, totaling almost 47,000 tons. The sailors from the U-505 survived the war primarily because they were captured, but for their families back home, they thought they had been lost at sea because the Allies sequestered them in a prisoner of war camp, didn't let anybody know that they were alive, didn't let them... Uh, send any letters home. The Red Cross wasn't allowed to help them as as per usual. And it's really because we had to keep it a secret that we had captured an intact German submarine with all of the code equipment and everything else on board. So it was a, a tough time for their families. But then imagine, you know, the excitement when they found out at the end of the war, they got a letter that, hey, I'm alive and I'm coming home. So, you know, it's just one of those stories that really drives home sort of what people went through in the era of World War II and going to the Museum of Science and Industry, going to see this U-505 exhibit, seeing the artifacts up close and and getting a feel for what it was like for some of these folks, even in just the smallest way, is just really impressive. It, It can be a very emotional experience for some people, and I think it's something that everybody should see. We just want to encourage you that if you happen to be in the Chicago area to take a stop at the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. Uh, It has everything from a coal mine to baby chicks that are hatching regularly, a huge train exhibit, uh, lots of STEM stuff, you know, science, technology, engineering, math, a little bit of art. There's a really cool dollhouse, actually, life-size dollhouse. Lots of cool things, including the U505. And... Most of that is all included in the price of your admission. The only things that are a separate charge is if you actually want to go onto the submarine, there's an additional charge, but the, the exhibit itself is free. And a couple of the other things, the IMAX theater has a little bit of special charge, um, but it's just, you can spend all day there and still not see it all. We, we try to go there a couple times a year just because you know it's only a few hours from home and there's always just a lot going on and a lot to see. So if you happen to be in the area, Take a stop by and enjoy the museum. So we went to Chicago and we saw a lot of cool stuff like the Yeti. Actually, we didn't really see the Yeti, but it felt like we saw the Yeti because it was so cold. Yes, and expensive. And Yeti are pricey. (laughs) (laughs) You wanted your poopers. Are you talking? You talk Can you first. hear me now? 